Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to be looking at services part four, specifically service type cluster IP. So in the previous video, I went through the different service types, the four service types, and I tried to illustrate what those look like. Now we're going to see the default service type, which we actually been using every time we create a cluster, but I'm going to be able to show you what it really does in this video with examples. In this video, there are no more illustrations. Um, we're going to simply go to the command line and experiment and play around. So make sure that uh, you have your Kubernetes cluster up. And again, you should be using K3D unless you have a really good reason not to be using it. All right, let's jump in. So I am at my command line. And what I'm going to do is make a directory for our um, well, actually, I'm going to copy recursively everything that we've done in service part two. I'm going to copy that to service part three because um, I'm taking over the same thing. And what is that? So if we go into service part three, directory that we just created, and I open my VS code, we should only have two files in there. We don't, we're not writing any code, we've already developed that. So it's our deployment and our, you know, service. Now I'm going to use minus O wide to show the IP addresses for both the pods and the service to prove that I'll each get their own IP address. So with my cluster running, we can see that I don't have any pods. The service that's running there with a cluster IP, that's a Kubernetes service. It's not any service that I've created or anything. Um, so let's just um, also go to service and part three directory here. So I can have access to those files. And so the first thing I want to do is to deploy an, our service, our application, and then create a service for it. So I've never shown you this before, but one of the easiest way to have uh, Kubernetes just create all the stuff for you at once is to just say cube ctl minus f, um, no, apply, sorry, apply minus f and then dot. And this may just run apply or create if you use create on all the files. And notice I didn't have to specify the order. It just picked up the files and it did its thing. And so we have exactly what we want. Okay. But if you look, you can see that here's our service and the type of it is cluster IP. That's the default. And let me just go back and show you what our service file looks like. We didn't do anything um, interesting in it other than to say, this is the name of our service. We want to select um, pods that have this uh, using the selector and the ports on those pods are 8080 and the port of our service is 8080 just happened to be the same but it didn't have to be because our service gets its own ip address so technically it could we can open any port and map it back to a port on our um, pod and there's our pod our pod they get their own ip address now the pods are running on nodes but the nodes also have their own ip address and so just in case you forgot that um remember i said that all the pod the nodes represents the physical layer right the physical networking so they get their own um ip address also so there they are so here are the nodes and they have their ip address okay now this is not external ip address because these are not real nodes these are nodes from docker right they're containers that we treat them like nodes and we'll get to that later in a minute but you can see they have their own ip address which is completely different from the IP address of the pod, and then of course the service gets own IP address. I keep repeating this because I want to really drive it home that everything here is getting its own IP address, and there's these def different layers of networking going on and routing. Okay, so now that we have our pod going, um, I think if we look at our deployment, okay, there were two replicas which we see here. So how do we access this? This is a cluster IP. We have to get into the cluster. So how do we do that? we can run another pod that's going to put us in the cluster and sort of enter that pod, right? So um, if we were to do like kubectl and do the run command, 
and then let's just say we were running something like Nginx, right? And maybe we're going to say that also our image is equals to um, Nginx. And then what we can do is say that so minus IT for interactive um, terminal. And so we want to run the command. And just let's say it's, um, I don't know, bash. Let's see if bash is available. And let's see if this is going to put us inside that container. We get a, not a pod. Um, this pod just happened to have one container. Okay. And there we go. So we could see we're now inside of um, this pod. And this pod also have its own IP address, which if we were to do IP address, List. Let's see. Oh, the IP command is not there. Let's do if config. Okay, that command is not there. Okay, I was trying to run some command to prove that. Oh, yeah, we're inside this part, but hopefully you can see that. All right. So now that I'm inside the pod, here's the IP address for one of those um, services that we're running. So, um, so for our service, so well, not our service, our application. And so what I can do is I can say curl, hopefully, give the IP address for that. Um, it was 10, 10, that 40, that, 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 and it was running on port 8080, right? And notice, there we go. But if we do this, sleep half a second, done, control A, and then I do while true, keep doing this. If I do this, I'm just going to get the same, I'm going to hit the same pod, right? Remember, each pod will act like a host. That's because I specifically say I want to hit that pod IP address, so it makes sense. On the other hand, if I were to use the service IP address, so let's copy the service IP address, and instead, if I use that, so I'm going to go back here, clean up, and so this is to show you that with a cluster IP, we are inside the cluster, we can access things. So there we go. And so now you can see it's load balancing between those um, two parts. And if I were to increase my number of replica, which I'm going to do by not even modifying the file, but what I can do is a cube CTL scale. I want to scale my deployment. And how many replicas I want? Let's just do five, for example. And the one I want to scale is this deployment. And if I run this, you can see um, it's going to increase it and give me more replicas. And if I go back here, you should start seeing that, oh, yeah, we're, had, we're hitting many more pods than what we had before. OK. All right. So that tells us, yes, we can do it. Now, there's one thing I want to show you. So, so um, the cluster IP is fun and all. But it still means that all we have to use the IP address, or at least look up the IP address. Wouldn't it be nice for us to be able to use the name of the service and don't have to worry about the cluster IP? And so if while we're within the cluster, if we were to do, let's see if the NS lookup command is here. NS lookup, and I type this. OK, so NS lookup command is not there. Um, let's see, can I type ping this? OK, ping command is not there. Wow, this is interesting. All right, so curl, let's see if we can do a curl again. And then I can give the service name and then port 8080. And so now I'm um, in the service using its uh, name. Now, let me try one thing. So if I try app update, app update, OK, yeah, this works. So the reason why I'm going to um try to oh i can't get to oh man okay i was trying to do an update to see if i could install the ns lookup tool because i wanted to show you um what the ip it would find the ip address but the nice thing is what i just showed you though is i can use that um service name to reach the service and there's actually a fully qualified name for that um, so it's actually this that default because we're in the default name space that SVC, which you can get away from cluster that local and that is the full name of that service. 
Now, the reason why you might want to use the full name is if you're trying to access a service in a different namespace. And we haven't talked about namespace yet, but since I'm showing you the, the service name, I decided to mention it. So this is going to come back. We'll come back to this once we introduce namespaces. So yes, so I can still use, um, you know, sleep point two, for example, done. And let's just do a real quick thing and do this. And we can see it all. I'm still accessing the service via um, the service name. All right, so that's, but this is within the cluster. We have to create a pod and get into that pod and access it. So I'll end it here so this isn't too long. And in the very next video, I'll show you how we can extend or change our service to be a node port service, and then how we can access that externally from the cluster. So, okay, thanks. If you're here and you like the material and you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. For those who are already subscribed, thank you for coming back. Thanks for your patience. Stay safe. Whatever you do, enjoy. Take care. Bye.